Fall Out Boy is back again, the second time. After a year of returns from My Chemical Romance and Paramore, everyone waited with bated breaths for something, anything, from the Chicago emo legends. It seemed like every emo band from the 2000s was releasing singles, announcing albums and tours, except Fall Out Boy. What gives? But in true Fall Out Boy fashion, the band announced their return in a really weird and convoluted way. Fans started receiving postcards with Field of Dreams references and pink seashells with numbers on them. Everyone started speculating song titles and what the album was going to be called, what it was going to sound like. Then, around Christmas time, Fall Out Boy gave us the gift we've all been waiting for. A really creepy claymation video with a snippet of guitar music. Send my love from the other side of the apocalypse Just about snap. January would see the release of the lead single, Love From The Other Side. The song was a return to form for the band, putting more emphasis back on the guitars. Fans were ecstatic. They were comparing it to the classic eras of Fall Out Boy. Later that month, they would release a second single, Heartbreak Feels So Good. Fans had the same, ugh, what are you doing with your hands? Fans had the same reaction going absolutely apeshit over the fact that Fall Out Boy picked up their guitars again, finally. So far, everyone seems stoked for the album, myself included. But it got me to thinking about Fall Out Boy's last album, released almost five years ago. Everyone seems to have come to the consensus that Mania is Fall Out Boy's worst album. But is it? In this video, I'm going to do my best to defend Fall Out Boy's worst album. I might make this a series because there's a lot of albums by great bands that everyone hates, but I actually kind of really like. That might just say something about my personal taste in music, but we're not here to talk about that today. Let's get into the video. Fall Out Boy experienced a lot of success with their sixth full-length album, American Beauty, American Psycho. The album spawned hits like Centuries, Irresistible, Irresistible featuring Demi Lovato, and Uma Thurman. They even contributed a song to Big Hero 6, a movie when I tell people I haven't seen you it, they're what? shocked and appalled. Long story short, this album was very good for them. And what do you do when you have a successful album? You make another one. Duh. While Fall Out Boy was touring American Beauty, they were writing material that would eventually make up Mania. The process was actually jump-started by Patrick Stump showing Pete Wentz the... Get it together. The process was actually jump-started when Patrick Stump showed Pete Wentz what would eventually become this album's lead-off single, Young and Menace. Pete Wentz described the vision for the album as follows. It feels like every once in a while, you've got to do a hard restart that clears the cache. It feels like every once in a while, you've got to do a hard restart that clears the cache and erases the hard drive. I think that's what Mania was. A big palate cleanser. I gotta, I gotta learn to read. That sounds pretty good, right? Fall Out Boy was progressing and trying something new. It's never backfired on a band before, right? <laughs> Oh shit. Disaster strikes! The album is delayed! Oh man, this is already backfiring. Oh god, oh geez. Originally supposed to be released in September of 2017, it was pushed back to January of 2018. Patrick Stump tweeted in August that he just wasn't satisfied with the album and he wasn't gonna release something that wasn't good. I mean, that's... That's fair, right? You don't want to put out a shitty product, you know? Alright, so... Things are looking better. Things are looking better. They're gonna fine-tune everything. They're gonna make it perfect. This is gonna be a perfect album. Right? At this point, I'm starting to think that maybe this album is cursed. And the critical reception didn't assage that fear. Is it assage or assuage? Tell me in the comments if I'm fucking stupid or not. The album received mixed reviews from critics. Not good, not bad. It's just... Eh. And I'm not saying you should listen to what critics say all the time. You should form your own opinions. You should like what you like, no matter what the critics say. But if you're a band that puts time, 
effort and money into an album, you want it to perform better than just eh. Fall Out Boy wouldn't release any new music save for a couple of singles off of their second greatest hits compilation. They would go on the Hella Mega Tour with Weezer and Green Day, and Mania would go down as their least liked album. But why? Does it deserve the negativity? Let's talk about that. So, like everyone else, I was hesitant about the album. I heard Young and Menace and I did not like it at first. I didn't like the vocal effects, and I was kind of confused about that Britney Spears reference. I bemoaned the lack of guitars. But with subsequent... Uh, but with subsequent... Why can't you speak? <coughs> subsequent. But with later singles like Wilson and Last of the Real Ones, my interest was piqued. Maybe this won't be complete shit, I thought to myself. So, I bought the CD. The first time I listened to the album in full, I was still a little bit hesitant. I was driving to my then-girlfriend's house for Easter, and it was a long drive, about half an hour, maybe more, depending on traffic. I figured now was the perfect time to give Mania a shot. With trepidation, I insert the disc into my car stereo, and I liked it. A lot. I've been a huge Fall Out Boy fan since I was 14. I discovered them through Take This To Your Grave and From Under The Cork Tree. I was a pop punk kid, but as I got older I started to appreciate albums like Infinity On High and Folly Ado for their just differentness. That's a word. I loved Patrick's voice and I loved Pete's writing. I still think Pete Wentz is one of the most underrated lyricists of all time and you could fucking quote me on that. But as they made their big comeback with Say Rock and Roll and American Beauty, I don't know, I felt like the lyrics just got a little... bland. And Mania is in top tier Fall Out Boy lyricism, but it's still pretty good. The opening track, Stay Frosty Royal Milk Tea, don't know what that title means, proves that Pete Wentz and Patrick Stump still got it. I'm about to go Tanya Harding on the whole world's knee is a lyric that I reference on the daily. And then lines like, all my childhood heroes have fallen off or died. Coupled with the pre-chorus, some princes don't become kings, hits extra hard when you realize that Prince was a huge influence on Patrick Stump. After that, I was excited for what the rest of the album had to offer. I was in. What followed was a pretty good album. Sure, it wasn't anything too different from the previous albums. Why did I like this one more than American Beauty, my least favorite Fall Out Boy album? The honest answer is... I don't know! I do not know. I think this album just got to me at the right time. The right time to lodge itself into my psyche and stay there. Why? How? Of all albums! The other track that really got me was Wilson. I saw the video for it before I even purchased the album. It featured Fall Out Boy in one of those like annoying infomercials that tries to sell you like I'm a flex tape. This infomercial was selling Fall Out Boy. <laughs> no need. I already bought a lifetime supply a long time ago. I'd say it was a song that made me buy the album. I could definitely relate to the lyrics at the time. I was gonna say something that would solve all our problems, but then I got drunk and I forgot what I was talking about. There's nothing more cruel than to be loved by everybody but you. If I could get my shit together, I would run away and never see any of you again. Not to mention the chorus has a Moonrise Kingdom reference, which it's... <sighs> oh! Not to mention the chorus has a Moonrise Kingdom reference, which is just on brand for Fall Out Boy. Last of the Real Ones is probably the most classic sounding Fall Out Boy song on this album. It's very punchy and you can actually kind of hear a little bit of Joe's guitar, believe it or not. And once again, at the time, I could really relate to these lyrics. I wonder if your therapist knows everything about me. Why am I reading them like dramatic monologues? Subsequent tracks like Church and Heaven's Gate 
prove that Patrick and Pete can still write hard hitters. And then Sunshine Riptide featuring Burma Boy is just one of those perfect summer jams. Even Young and Menace grew on me. And of course, in true Fall Out Boy fashion, they had to have a movie reference in one of their track listings, and that is Bishop's Knife Trick, which is obviously a reference to Alien. And this closing track is perfect. It almost sounds like it should be at the end credits of a movie. It's so melodramatic in the best ways. And these are the last blues we're ever gonna have. It's kind of poetic that this was the song that Fall Out Boy left us on for five years. Filming. Does Mania deserve better? Does it deserve the negativity it gets from fans? Yes and no. Mania is not a bad album. It's an unfortunate album. Album delays never really work in an album's favor. I feel like the band worked really hard on this album and wanted it to be perfect, but maybe they still felt unsure. They wanted a rebirth, a hard restart like Pete said, but I think they released it too close to the last album. I think if you want to have a restart as a band and try new sounds, you have to go away for a bit you know, kind of create that want, and then slowly release music. They're doing that now with so much for Stardust. I think this new album will do what Mania was maybe supposed to do. Do I think Mania deserves the negativity from fans? No, not at all. I think it's a decent album with some surprisingly good songs on it. It's a bit of a meme to make fun of this album and the era with its purple hue and llamas for some reason. And I actually really like this album and I'm not sure if it's because it was released in my last year of college before I dropped out and I'm sort of nostalgic for it or what. I can see where other fans are coming from though. It could have been better, especially with the way it was built up. It's disappointing when one of your favorite bands releases an album that's just... Eh. But I believe that Mania is not Fall Out Boy's worst album. I think they could do much worse than this. That's gonna do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed my attempted defense of Fall Out Boy's most hated album. What do you think? Do you like Mania? Do you hate it? Leave a comment below and let me know. I'd like to welcome my new followers. It's, uh, it's really exciting. I'm happy to have you. Every time I get a new follower, it's just really awesome and it just makes my day a little bit better. If you know anyone who is a giant music nerd like I am, show them this channel. Tell them to subscribe. I'm trying to get 100 subscribers by summertime. If I get 100 subscribers by summertime, I'm gonna do something. Anyway, I'll see you next time, and uh, that's the end of the video. Goodbye.